Hello guys, how are you? This is the build of the 172nd Revell Tiger. Um, I had a lot of fun on this one. It, it was very small. I am used to do at least 148 and only then I realized that this is a 172nd. To be honest, I didn't mind uh, the scale at all. And I found this very fun and a very good kit. Fits very well. The only thing I just, I really enjoyed the one, the way this one uh, was finished, but the tracks could have been a bit better. Even so, I had a lot of fun. A very good kit, got to test um, a lot of techniques, the distressed paint and some washes. I found out that a wash that I was applying actually was even better as a filter. I learned a lot, so I hope you enjoyed also this video. As always, I start by cutting the pieces of the sprue and by trimming uh, them, removing the excess plastic. As you can see here, uh, my hand shakes a bit, but um, this was not an obstacle uh, during this build. The build on this kit is very, very straightforward. I mean, it's not, I, I don't need to comment here anything nor nothing because you can see it is very, very simple to build. I just had to um, add a few details, uh, mainly uh, the welding seams. Is that the name? Welding seams. I just thought the tank would be better with it. I researched, uh, saw some pictures on the internet and tried to be as truthful and faithful to the real tank as possible on these small details. Also, I tried to made, make a bit of Zimmerit. Maybe this tank, this one in particular, didn't have any Zimmerit. Um, please do understand, I was just having fun, wanted to test some um, new techniques and at this scale is not easy so I tried to do some Zimmerit or at least to create the illusion of it as uh, as well as some um, seam um, welding seam lines
Very, very good fit, as you can see. These side skirts, um, fenders, uh, I just tried to uh, make it damaged and separated that panel by panel. And later I used a Dremel to make it thinner to give more the scale appearance of metal at 172nd. I should have done that while the, the, the piece was out of the kit. However, it turned out well, not perfect, but it gave the illusion of being a bit more thinner uh, and at scale. And here I'm preparing to apply the Zimmerit, uh, the area of the Zimmerit. I just saved the rest of the area of the tank with some masking paper and used to me a white putty. Uh, with a bit of lacquer thinner, just mix it all up and applied with the brush that white paste and then used an exacto blade. Uh, please do mind, bear in mind that the exacto bl blade is not to um, mark the plastic underneath the, the, the white putty. It rather, it's just to give the illusion of the Zimmerit texture itself, okay? So I'm going very smoothly. This at least gives it a bit of texture, uh, looking at least the appearance of Zimmerit. At this scale, 172nd is very difficult to make, to hand make these um, kind of extras, okay? Uh, but, well, I was having fun and tried the best I could. I really found this process very, very relaxing. Um, nothing to worry about, just the white putty, just to paint it on the armor and then molding the texture, doing the best I can. I just found this a very zen-like thing to do, just loved it.
And here I tried to do a bit of welding seams on a turret. I checked some photos, some reference, and noticed that these tanks had welding seams and one across the middle of the beginning of the low angle of the turret. Um, the way I did that was by making a line with extra thin cement and taking advantage of the plastic being melted and more soft and very very smoothly and with a, uh, a new blade just marking and carving on the plastic uh, the best I could at the same scale and at the same size trying not to make one bigger than the other just making the welding seams on the turret and around the, the tiger itself These two headlights, um, well, more ahead, I just thought that I, if I was building this tank with so much damage or um, weathering, that the fact that it has the, both headlights intact, it would be a bit, well, let's say a bit uh, inaccurate. And so I, as you can see, I just cut one. I considered doing some wiring. But then I thought, a 170 second scale, are you nuts? And no, I just let it be like that. making the damage, battle damage on the tank uh, with the Dremel, just very gently use that to simulate some impacts and at the same time try to make, as I told before previously, uh, the um, fenders and all the side skirts and fenders of the Tiger a bit thinner, try to make it a bit more at scale, you know, a bit more thin. This tank was not the tank of a commander, however, I thought that if I placed a, an antenna and break a bit the antenna, uh, the direction of the antenna, that it would look a bit different. Also I made a 0.1 millimeter copper wire 
rope as you can see and it was just some extra detail you know these small kits the better we can detail it that's what I learned the better and it was a lot of fun to make these small and human let's say details on the kit and we're starting to paint the tiger first a black matte base um, and I really found out that a black matte base foundation on a tank is very good even because if you just forget to paint some small corners or something the black looks better than the gray and it will look like a fake shadow Now let's start and apply the Dunkelgelb. Um, I started with a light mist because these acrylic paints really have to be very uh, thinned and very uh, misted first. My Bar Sharp 180 was awesome, I have to say. I know that I am sponsored and I say that in all, yeah, but I am truly amazed with what these airbrushes can do. More ahead you will see the control I have with a very thin line and I, it was very good. I have no words to describe this airbrush, very good. I should also mention that uh, while I am painting, I am using a bar sharp paint booth. Um, it extracts the pain, and chemicals and odors. Um, it really helps to keep the environment clean and my health improved 500%. This Dunkelgelb hitting the black base on the tank really messes with your brain, doesn't it? It really looks like a shadow. Uh, that's why I love modeling so much. Can you imagine create light with paint <laughs> Thank you.
now with a bit of um, olive green, uh, sorry, very sorry, Dunkelgelb, with a bit of white. Uh, let's start and do some highlightings on the details um, of this tiger. may seem strange what I'm about to say, but this stage here is all about fun. And all you have to do is pick your brush and just start highlighting the details. And don't worry, because as the process is going, the kit itself will speak to you and will tell you where it wants you to highlight this and that you will be on a workflow very smooth workflow and you will notice automatically where to hit with the paint and now the olive green As you can see, this is a Bar Sharp 180. I have a Bar Sharp compressor with air deposit. Obviously, this is a mix between a good paint dilution and a good pressure and a very good airbrush. And this Bar Sharp with the ideal pressure and ideal mix of paint, these lines were perfect. You know, when painting the olive green, we lost a bit of highlight, so I'm using some drops of white on the olive green and highlighting just on top of the olive green. Here I'm using the sponge technique with a mix of German grey and another sponge with chipping color, that chocolate color almost. Uh, color 
Um, I was starting to do this as a uh, chipping, but then I noticed that as the time went by and I am using more and more the, the, the sponge, that the paint is smaller and smaller and smaller and leaving some small, almost microscopic, let's call it, droplets. And that um, inspired me, let's say, to, to keep tapping on the kit, all over the kit, very gently. And that made a, a proper texture on the kit not the olive green and not the olive grün dunkelgelb sorry and olive grün they were not as uh, uh, as single color they had some uh, disruption on, on it so it helped to create a texture and i really enjoyed this I later applied uh, a light, kind of light earth, light brown um, oil wash from Modeler's World. And then, then I let it dry and then very gently made some streaks and it worked perfectly. Because the pigment was not too strong, was light, you know, that applied to the 172nd scale, it didn't turn out so exaggerated. Also, I used a very light tone of rust because this is a very small kit. Don't forget if you use old rust, but very, very accentuated tone, it will look out of scale, a bit exaggerated. applying here a bit of rust under the steel cables uh, because iron always drops into the armor of the tank from rain you know and I'm using the pigment dry without any kind of uh, pigment uh, cement or fixer just to give it the tonality the, that light degrade light of rust you know
I could have bought some um, photo edge set grills for this tank, uh, but I didn't. I just wanted to have some fun. And I looked at it and it seemed a bit naked. So I gave it a bit of suit uh, just to give the appearance of exhaust smoke coming out. And at the same time, to, I, to cover a bit the fact that I didn't use the grill. After making a bit more of rust with oils, cleaning a bit the tank, giving it a matte coat, uh, I gave this build as a finished one. Enjoy it thoroughly. The kit is very good. I admit the tracks could have been a bit better, but I learned my lesson. Next time I know how I will um, built it without any kind of misalignment. There is one or two misalignments in the tracks, but no problem there. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, consider subscribing. Consider always also supporting me on Patreon. I'm there only to make it my hobby a bit more sustainable financially. Only for that. And I hope you enjoyed this one as I did, as much as I did. And as always, guys, as always, keep modeling, guys. Keep modeling. Always, always with a smile. Cheers, guys.